In this lesson, we're going to be looking at perpendicular and angle bisectors. So with this, we're going to get quite a few theorems. Theorems 5, 2, 5, 3, 5, 4, and 5, 5. So let's get started with 5, 2. The perpendicular bisector theorem, 5, 2, states... If a point is on the perpendicular bisector of a segment, then is equidistant from the endpoints of the segment. So meaning in my diagram down below here, if I were to put a point on this perpendicular bisector that is shown here and call it C, then C is the same distance from A as it is from B and this is a perpendicular bisector, so we would end up with two right triangles that are congruent based on hypotenuse leg. Now, theorem 3-5 is the converse of theorem 5-2, so it states, if a point is equidistant from the endpoints of a segment, then it's on the perpendicular bisector of the segment. So we're going to use this to solve for n and find the length of PQ in the diagram below. So, <clears throat> since we know that PS and SR are congruent, we can make the conclusion that by definition QS is a perpendicular, or is a bisector at least, of PR. And since we have the right angle marker, we know it's a perpendicular bisector. By the theorems, we then know that QR and PQ are congruent to one another. So using those facts, we can now set up an equation to solve. So let's take 3n minus 1 and set it equal to 5n minus 7. That is what is meant by them being congruent or equidistant. Solving this for n, I would subtract 3n from each side, so I have a negative 1 equals 2n minus 7. We add 7, so we have 6 equals 2n. Division property of equality says I can divide both sides by 2, and I have 3 equal to n. That tells us the value of the variable. However, we were looking for that distance. So substituting it in, 3 times 3 is 9, minus 1 gives us a length of 8 for pq. And on the other side, 3 times 5 is 15, minus 7 is 8 for RQ. So they are equidistant from the endpoints of the line segment. Now this works for side lengths, but we also need to have bisectors for angles. So theorems 5, 4, and 5, 5 deal with the angles. Let's begin with 5, 4. Angle bisector theorem states, if a point is on the bisector of an angle, then it is equidistant from the sides of the angle. So what this would look like is that if I have an angle drawn and a bisector of the angle such that the two parts are e congruent, that is definition of a bisector, then any point that sits on this is going to be equidistant from the sides of the angle. Now when we look at the distance from one point to a line, that distance is always going to be perpendicular. If you go anything other than the perpendicular, you're going further than you have to, so we look at that basic idea. Next, the converse of theorem 5-4 is theorem 5-5, which states if a point is on the interior of an angle, sorry, if a point on the interior of an angle is equidistant from the sides of the angle, then the point is on the angle bisector. So if I know that some random point sitting out here is equidistant from the two sides, then it has to be on the angle bisector itself. <clears throat> so we can use these concepts and ideas in order to find other parts of triangles as well. Let's take a look. In the diagram, we can see that ray AC or CA is the angle bisector based on the markings of congruence for angles BCA 
and ACD. That means that point A is equidistant from ray CB and ray CD. We need to find the length of seg segment AD. So the way we do this is we employ the angle bisector theorems and we simply say that 6x plus 3 is going to equal 4x plus 9. Because those have to be equidistant, the line segments are congruent. Now, solving for x, I subtract 4x from each side, so I have 2x plus 3 is equal to 9. Subtraction property of equality, I can subtract 3, giving me 2x is equal to 6. Division property of equality says I can divide both sides by 2 and have x equals 3. So again, I have solved the equation for this variable x, but I have not answered the question. The question being stated is what is AD? So I need to take this and substitute it back in to the expression for AD, telling me that 4 times 3 plus 9 is equal to length AD. Multiplying, that gives me 12 plus 9, which is 21. So that is my solution to the question that was being asked. So angle and perpendicular bisectors allow us other relations and opportunities when we're dealing with triangles, and they'll help us to find missing lengths. So take good notes, have these theorems down, and be ready to use them.